And now, legendary Hollywood Holmes continues on American movie classics. On a tree-lined street in the San Fernando Valley community of Toluca Lake sits a home that you wouldn't expect to find in Southern California. A gracious antebellum Southern colonial that has overcome hardship and disaster, built by one of America's most beloved entertainers. In fact, his name is on the 1934 building permit as the contractor for the house. How would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar. Bing Crosby once had plans to go to law school, but that changed when the entertainment world heard his silky smooth singing voice. Moonlight becomes you so. Bing began his career in the late 1920s singing on the radio. By 1940, Bing was one of Paramount Pictures' stable of stars when he was teamed with Bob Hope and Dorothy L'Amour in The Road to Singapore. Sunbeams trying to dance steps, songbirds sound their rays, and... The film was such a hit that more road pictures were made. I'm no terrific success, I ought to worry, I guess. Bing's celebrity would catapult him beyond star status. There are actors, there are stars, a few are superstars, and once in a while there was a legend. And Bing Crosby was an actor, he was a star, he was a superstar, and boy was he a legend and is a legend. Bing's original Toluca Lake home was designed by architect J. Robert Harris. Built on six level acres, it contained 20 rooms. Bing deliberately built the house away from Hollywood for his wife, Dixie Lee, and their four sons. Lindsay, the baby of the family, Gary, the eldest, and twins, Dennis and Phil. Bing felt the Toluca Lake Colonial would provide a protective environment for his family. An American colonial home was really a appropriate for Bing Crosby. It resonated with his all-American image, the image of home and hearth and the value of family. Today, Phil, one of the twins, is the only Crosby son still living. He visited his now remodeled childhood home for the first time in over 50 years. Even though he was very young at the time, Phil recalls his father quite differently from stories that Bing Crosby was a harsh disciplinarian. Be honest. He was very calm, very relaxed, and I can't remember ever, ever seeing him, even on the golf course, lose his temper or anything like that. So he was just a calm, easygoing guy. After a round of golf, an open cabana built next to the swimming pool was a setting for legendary clam bakes at the Crosby's. The parties included neighbors who were among Hollywood's most famous. The guest house was available to the likes of Frank Sinatra and Bob and Dolores Hope. On the tennis court next to the swimming pool, 1920s tennis champion Bill Tilden helped Bing with his forehand. The party crowd would watch the matches from the gazebo at center court or keep score in the grandstand across the way. Unfortunately, the Crosbys were forced from their Toluca Lake home in 1943 after a Christmas tree fire severely damaged the house. Bing didn't arrive in time to save a valued record collection, so he went after something else worth salvaging. And he ran to the closet because he had been stuffing money into a shoe and sort of a mad shoe money. And he got there and the shoe had not burned and the money had not burned. So I uh, just probably twenty or thirty thousand dollars stuffed in a golf shoe and, went and made it through the fire. Over the years, the house has been remodeled and updated by subsequent owners, including actors Andy Griffith and Jerry Van Dyke. But in 1994, the house was damaged again when the Northridge earthquake struck Southern California. Architect Paul Ramsey Jr. undertook the job of remodeling the house for the Van Dykes. He retained many of the home's early American features. Tuscan-style columns point upwards to a roof line that is unique. It's interesting.
interesting in general about the colonials built in Southern California, the roof lines got shallower. We don't have snow. So the colonials, unless they are really very, very authentic, as some of them were in earlier times, by the time you're into the 30s, the colonial style has become Hollywoodized or Southern Californiaized. The large entrance hall with its original chandelier leads to a sweeping staircase that typifies traditional colonial homes. Federal style painted woodwork is predominant throughout the house with dental molding along the ceilings, a reminder of Greek architecture. Beneath the staircase, an archway leads guests into a spacious living room. When I saw the entrance to the living room, it was so charming and so unique and so much thought had been put into it. It being Christmas that we were going to be moving in, I had a feeling, just such a sense of such a, a lovely, sort of like what you see on the covers of the Bing Crosby old albums, you know, of that, that family Christmas. A large original fireplace adds grace and warmth to the room. Across from the living room, the dining room reflects the early American tradition. Polished chestnut stained parquet floors mirror the wainscoting which lines the walls. A fireplace provides a traditional touch. The stairway leads to the second floor where Bing kept a small study, a quiet place where he could work on his music. Bing and Dixie Crosby slept in a nearby bedroom, which was restored following the 1994 earthquake that badly damaged the house. A closet-sized vault next to the bedroom is the place where Dixie kept her furs. The vault was one of the few places left undamaged in the 1943 fire. Remodeling of the home included a billiard room where Bing's private den used to be. Additions include a luxurious first floor bathroom, which overlooks the swimming pool and sun-drenched gardens in the rear of the property. A variety of flowers accent the walkways which lead from the pool to the tennis court. The thick stemmed rose bushes were planted by Dixie herself. The rear of the house has a southern exposure and a large backyard where Bing and his sons would play football. The original white fence separates the garden from an orchard of fruit trees which include walnut and California citrus trees. For Phil Crosby, returning home brought up many such memories, some of them bittersweet. You're seeing the house he used to live in, all the dents and nicks and whatever we broke has been fixed, but I think if we, if we hadn't had the fire, we'd have lived here, oh gosh. We could have lived here forever. And while the stars of Hollywood will live forever on film, the homes they lived in will stand as monuments to their wealth.